guys. I got three. One, two, three. Linux Elite systems here that I take care of. Downstairs, downstairs, and this is the upstairs. This unit, this house, I've been taking care of this house since I started my business. The previous homeowners would flip flop. They would use me, then use the company that originally installed these. So this downstairs air handler had a really, really bad Freon leak in the evaporator coil, which I've done video on before. They chose to let the other company change out the air handler. And then the house was sold to the homeowners that I do work for now, who absolutely love me and will not flip flop on me and call anybody else. The other homeowner, uh, she actually called me for her new house and I refused to uh, do her work because of her flip floppiness. You know, I would give her a recommendation and she would call the other company out, you know, I guess if they were cheaper, which I don't know how because I'm a smaller company. But anyway, she was established with them and I don't bill out people and they would probably bill her over a 30 day period. And that's why she would go with them. But uh, these new people, they love me. They don't want the other company here. And they they're having issues with the uh, the lady and the gentleman that sold them this house. But uh, so this one is now leak free. It has a new Linux air handler. The, the people are still a Linux dealer. But this downstairs, one of them's a two and a half, one's a three. I got a set of Testos there. There's a two and a half, 14 sear. And this one should be a three. Yeah, this is a 14 sear three ton from 2011. So I bought these from a guy off a of Facebook group for a really good price. He sold me the manifold, the pipe clamps, and the hoses, cheaper than just than you can buy the manifold for. And I bought these for when I do stuff like this for, more, for when I'm working on two units. But my guess is both of these are gonna be low on gas. Go ahead and turn these on. But it's already on 410A, like that fall down there. Let that fall down there, zero them out. All right, hook up, manifold. Oh yeah, I can tell you just by feeling that suction line that, that this thing's low on gas. Oh yeah, I'll show it to y'all here in just a second. <sighs> Definitely long gas. Coils are not really dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut that one off until I go get some gas. Now I'm gonna hook up these testos and I have nowhere to prop y'all for that. All right, there's system number two in the middle on the testos. Both of them extremely long gas. So let's get some 410A and a scale and gas these machines up. All right, so we've added a little over two pounds and we're getting there. I'm going to go. I'm thinking it's going to take probably about three pounds. Two and a half right there. Superheat's starting to come down now, starting to get a little bit of sub cooling. Suction line temperature's coming down. She's starting to pull some heat. So, we'll see how many pounds this one takes and then how many, but this is gonna cost her some money today. We need to, uh, we need to at least change the air handlers. 
We'll see what they want to do. They're getting ready to renovate. I think they want to wait till then, but we'll see what happens. All right, this is the three ton. I got the charge where I want it. Sub cooling on this unit's only like three degrees and it's right at two. Super heat looks good. Everything's looking good. Pounds of gas to get it there. So now we're gonna move over to the Testos with the Freon and the scale and the wife's phone and see how many pounds it's gonna take. It was running about the same PSI, so it's, it's gonna cost her some money today. <laughs> All right, we're on the two and a half ton. Well, you can see the liquid going through the Testo sight glass. Got almost a pound, there we go. This one had like 55 PSI. This one behind me had 70 PSI. So this one might take a little more gas unless the line set shorter, I'm not sure. A little over a pound. Let her eat some more. Well, I haven't used Testos in forever. But I got these for when I'm doing stuff like this, working on multiple units. You know, I know a lot of you guys are like, get you some probes, get you some probes. I just, I don't like the probes. I'm a manifold guy. I like a digital manifold, but I just don't like probes. Oh, this one may not take as much. The line set must be shorter on this one. Two pounds in. Well, I say that. Let's, let's let it stabilize before I dump some more. Boy, the sight glass sure is nice and clear on the Testo compared to the uh, S-Van. So... She's settling down, but yeah, we're definitely going to need some more gas. I'll keep you guys updated. Alrighty, so after four pounds on this machine as well, I like the way we're looking. We got about 15 degrees of superheat. Subcooling's a little high, but uh, but that's okay. Line temperature looks good. Evaporator temperature looks good. So definitely pulling good heat now. So now I'm going to go in there and speak to them about, well, I'm going to bring them their invoice and they're not going to be happy about that because four plus four is eight pounds and you can imagine what kind of money that's going to cost them. So they're going to have to at least replace the air handlers. I already know that these systems leak except that one because that air handler has been replaced. But I do know I've already found the leak in this air handler and in this one. So... I know it's the evaporators. Air handlers need to be replaced. I'll let y'all know what they say. I'm going to go in there and talk to them. All right, guys, just to put an ending to this video, that particular house, like I said, I've been working on it for years. This is the second homeowner. Uh, I told a little bit about that. Um, but I mostly worked on the upstairs system, which was an air handler. I had worked on the downstairs systems a couple times, but not nearly as much as the upstairs. And I forgot that the downstairs units were gas furnaces with cased coils. So what we're going to do is they were getting ready to renovate and they were going to have me rip all three Linux systems out and go back with ream systems. And the wife got pregnant. She's now eight months pregnant. So that has been put on hold, but they don't want to spend money on Freon all the time like they did today. And they don't want the air going out with a brand new baby in the house. So I told them the cheapest thing we could do right now was to put in some new coils. They're four 10 a systems. The condensers are in really good shape. I said, we can hold off on all that and just put coils in. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change out two cased coils. One's a 14 inch and one is a 17 inch. Uh, the three ton machine is a 17 inch coil. The other, the two and a half ton is a 14 inch, but I'm going to, the, the, the two and a half is a lint. The model number on Linux says 24 slash 30. So it's made for two or two and a half. I'm going to put three tons on both. Cause one is a three ton. And then I got a two and a half ton condenser. So I'm going to put a three ton evaporator on it too. Cause they make them in 14. They ADP makes three ton and uh, 17 and 14 inch cabinet. I'm going with ADP coils. I've had nothing but good luck with ADP, ADP coils. They're all aluminum, knock on wood. I haven't had any issues with them at all. So that's what we're going to do for these people. Just the cheapest thing we can do so that they're leak free on air 
and they don't have to worry about that with a brand new baby in the house. So I just wanted to clarify that and thank y'all for watching and we'll see y'all on the next one.